What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I am back today to give you a review of the New Balance 1000 in the silver metallic and black colorway. So this originally was a silhouette that released back in 1999, but it seems like New Balance is going to be really pushing this silhouette hard in the coming months ahead. So first they debuted with the Joe Fresh Goods collaboration consisting of two colorways, but then the brand is slated to release a ton of general release colorways including this one right here. So this colorway I believe is set to drop in the end of April, and the official colorway for this shoe is Silver Metallic, Black, and Dawn Glow, and the style code for this shoe is M1000SL. So I grabbed these here at a local New Balance store in Toronto. I just walked into the store and I saw them sitting on the shelf early, and they retailed for a price of 175 Canadian dollars, and I believe the US retail price is 150 US dollars. So this silhouette, based off of what I've been reading online and even my personal opinion, it's been pretty split in terms of whether people like it or hate it. A lot of people are comparing these to the Nike Air Max 97 and I can definitely see that. The upper shares some similar characteristics, but the tooling of the shoe is completely different from an Air Max 97. To me, it feels a lot chunkier and beefier. And I'll be honest, I'm not completely sold on this silhouette yet. Kind of like models like the New Balance 9060, the design of the shoe is just kind of polarizing. So I can definitely see why a lot of people love this model and at the same time why a lot of people also hate it. So jumping right into the details of this shoe, as we start things off with the toe box, you'll see that the base layer of the sneaker, this is covered in this black colored mesh, which almost looks like the mesh you'd see on basketball shorts, for example. Overlaid on the front toe box, we have this shiny silver synthetic leather, we have this reflective 3M panel on the lateral edge, and this embroidered gray mark on the medial side. Moving downwards on the lateral side again, we have 1000 branding embroidered in gray, and then flowing through the entire side panels of the shoe, we have more of that synthetic silver leather, which also has lines of embroidery flowing across. Stitched in the middle, we have the New Balance N logo. This is done in this translucent TPU, which is black in the center and has this aged yellow look to it on the edges. And then covering the bottom of the heel, we have more synthetic leather overlays. We have the small reflective silver layer here on the lateral side only. We have 1000 branding embroidered again on the medial side this time, along with New Balance branding embroidered on the mesh itself. And then at the top of the heel, we have the New Balance N logo embroidered here too. In terms of the laces, this pair comes with two different lace options. The standard lace that they come with is an oval shaped lace done in this very light gray or off-white color. But they also come with a secondary pair of rope laces if you want to give the shoe a little bit more of that trail or hiking shoe aesthetic. The laces weave through these eyelets, which are these silver and black eyelets, but interestingly enough, you'll see they also offer traditional eyelets, so I guess there's two different ways you can lace up these shoes, giving it some level of customization. Stitched on the top of the tongue, we have the synthetic silver leather with a translucent panel down the middle, which incorporates this white colored stitch detailing. The tongue itself is constructed out of that black colored mesh, the same mesh that we saw on the toe box, and then on the very top of the tongue, we have this woven layer with New Balance 1000 branding. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in a black colored mesh. And you'll see on the interior of the back of the shoe, we have the secondary layer of heel cushioning and support. Moving on to the insoles, so these come with your standard foam lined insole. It's covered in a black mesh on top, and we have New Balance running branding pressed onto the heel in white. So the upper of the shoe sits atop this dual density foam midsole, which is constructed out of polyurethane and New Balance's Absorb foam technology. So the Absorb sits both underneath the heel as well as the forefoot. And this is a very sculpted and exaggerated looking midsole, and it's entirely painted in this cream color. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so the outsole here is crafted using a black colored rubber. From heel to toe, we have a very unique traction pattern, and in the middle, cradling the foam, we have New Balance's Stability Web Technology. This is basically a TPU shank plate, which is there to help with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about how these fit, I'm sure that's the million dollar question. So because I was able to try these on in the store, I tried on both my true size as well as a half size down. So my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. Originally trying these on in a size 10, the overall fit was very comfortable, but they ran noticeably long. So with my heel pushed back to the edge, there was over a thumbs width space between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe. And normally for me, I like my shoes to be a little bit more snug fitting. So because of that, I tried these on in a nine and a half, which is a half size down. Again, pushing my heels to the back of the shoe, I'd say that there's about an index fingers width space between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe. However, the toe box was a bit more cramped, not to the point where it was super uncomfortable, 
but it wasn't as free feeling as going true to size felt. So if I had to compare the size of these to something else, I'd say that they feel kind of similar to a 990V2. So I normally go half size down to a 9.5 in 990s like the 990V3, V4, V5, and V6. Whereas I usually go with a size 10 or true to size with the V2s because the toolbox is a little bit more narrow. However, because the toolbox on these don't run as narrow, I'd say as a 990V2, I took the gamble, got these a half size down, just because I didn't like that there was so much extra room lengthwise going true to size. So long story short, if you don't mind your shoes having a bit more extra length in them, then go with your typical made in Asia New Balance size, the same size you'd wear for a 2002R or a 1906R. But again, if you're in between sizes, or you just like a really snug one-to-one -one fit, then go with your made in USA size, which for most people is a half size down. Moving on to the comfort, so these were actually surprisingly comfortable. Just basing off the design of the shoe, I was expecting something a lot heavier and a lot stiffer. However, trying them on in real life, they actually felt lighter than I expected. And I have to say this midsole that they use, it feels extremely soft and cushioned. So right away you can feel the compression and the squishiness of this foam. I'd say that it kind of feels similar to the tooling of like a Nike Zoom Vermeer 5 almost. So in that sense, it was unexpectedly very comfortable and very plush. And finally, from a quality and craftsmanship standpoint, so first off, from a material standpoint, these were really nothing special. All the materials used on the shoe are synthetic. So in that sense, it's kind of similar to a traditional Nike Air Max 97. We just have these synthetic silver leathers and a lot of reflective panels as well. So the materials were nothing great. And in terms of the build quality, it was okay. Most importantly, the panels were lined up consistent between both feet. There were a lot of long threads that I had to trim down myself but no major flaws on the shoe that I could see. So for the price point you're paying, I thought the build quality wasn't bad. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you, and I'll show you guys how these look. All in all, this is an interesting segue from New Balance, leading us in this new direction and style as they bring back this New Balance 1000 silhouette. As for me, I'm not personally completely sold yet on this model, and maybe I just haven't found the right colorway yet, but on a positive note, I was pleasantly surprised by how comfortable these were, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on this silhouette. If any future GR colorways or collabs drop, I'm not ruling it out completely yet. It's just not an immediate love at first sight for me. So leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what do you guys think about this New Balance 1000 silhouette. What are your thoughts on this silver metallic and black colorway? However you feel about it, leave your thoughts down below and let's talk about it. And as usual, if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on x at sean.go spelt out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. Good luck for anyone trying to pick these up when they drop later on this month. I appreciate the continued love and support and I'll catch you guys all in my next review.